This is not a temple, nor a cemetery, but a school with parents outside the gates whose children are taking the college entrance exam, the most important exam of the year. At this very moment, Chinese parents trust the help of the divine more than the Communist Party. For Chinese students, passing the college entrance exam allows them to go to college. It means more job opportunities after graduation. The education itself is secondary. Nowadays, Chinese university graduates are facing an unprecedented job crisis. According to Chinese official data, the total size of the 2021 Chinese college graduate population has reached 9.09 million, an increase of 350,000. In February, China's National Bureau of Statistics showed that the unemployment rate for people aged 16 to 24 was 13.1 percent in February 2021. According to China Enterprise Survey data, 1 million small businesses directly transferred or closed down in 2020 under the impact of the pandemic, affecting the employment of 7 million people. In a press conference held on June 16, China's State Council Information Office acknowledged that the pressure exists on total employment, mainly due to the fact that more than 14 million people have been added to the urban labor force this year, including 9.09 .09 million college graduates. At the same time, the phenomena of college graduates having difficulties finding jobs and businesses having difficulties recruiting workers exist simultaneously in China. Why is this the case? On July 12, the media in mainland China reported some very optimistic news. However, according to informed sources in China, it is an open secret that all faculties in Chinese universities report employment rates of over 95% every year. This information can be found on Chinese websites as well. Universities need to assure their higher-ups that the employment rate of their schools is around 90 to 95 percent. The schools adopt an approach where they require students to secure an employment agreement with a company in exchange for a graduation certificate from the school, resulting in many students having to forge employment agreements. A week ago, the Chinese website 163.com published a report entitled in 2021, half of the students will be unemployed. Beijing's leading media, Xinjiang Daily, cited the following data. As of May 13, China's Ministry of Education, together with human resources and social security departments, had conducted 40 special youth job fairs, while a total of 3.42 million jobs were offered to graduates. Using simple math, 3.42 million positions correspond to 9.09 .09 million graduates, leaving a shortfall of more than half. An article on China's social media website, QQ, quotes information from a national recruitment site, Xiaopin.com, which shows that 26.3% of the 2020 graduates directly affected by the pandemic last year still had not solved their employment problems after they had graduated. In addition, the pandemic has led to more overseas students choosing to return home to find jobs. A survey by Waxop, a global career data development database, shows that the number of international students who wish to return to China for employment in 2021 has increased by 48% compared to 2020. In other words, not only has the number of college graduates in 2021 increased significantly, but many graduates from previous years who have not been able to find a job, together with a large number of overseas students, is resulting in a more difficult employment situation for young people in 2021 than in previous years. But there is a strange phenomenon in China. That is, many businesses are having trouble recruiting skilled workers. According to China's official statistics, the shortage of skilled workers is about 20 million. This is due to China's long-standing failure to improve its vocational and technical education system, resulting in a severe shortage of skilled workers. This market has long been filled by relatively young, rural workers or young people with less than college or high school education. 
While this generation is gradually aging and does not have the physical strength to withstand such high intensity work, its shrinking size is making a peculiar contrast with the growing number of young college graduates. Why are there more and more college graduates in China? China has been expanding its universities since 1999. During the reign of former Communist Party leader Jiang Zemin, his mistress, Chen Zhili, was appointed as China's Minister of Education in 1998. She was later promoted to state councillor in 2003, overseeing education for both the country and the military, and has been in control of the education sector for a long time. After becoming the Minister of Education, Chen ordered the expansion of colleges and universities and the industrialization of education, as instructed by Jiang Zemin. The so-called industrialization of education has turned China's education sector into a profit-making economy, with schools charging fees under various names, tuition fees going up, and corruption in the education sector becoming rampant. All the education experts talk about the dream of education. As a parent, I tell you, it's not useful to me at all. I know what kind of results my kid will face if he doesn't go to a leading university. Education is becoming more equitable. As a university teacher, I only know that there are fewer and fewer kids in the leading universities from rural areas. My child is in an after-school class of 800 yuan per hour. His classmates in a class of 2,000 yuan per hour. Things have come to this point today. Why is no one telling the truth? My child is only in fourth grade, not yet to middle school or high school. My long march has only taken the first step. But I'm already feeling blurry. Hasn't the education in this day and age shifted too much onto the parents? You see, we need to know how to help with the homework. We need to pick up and drop off our kids. We need to be with our kids to grow up together. And so how rich do I have to be to do all that? A person who works 10 hours a day, whose monthly rent or mortgage payments account for about 40% of the family income. We also have parents to support, kids to care for, and we have to commute in the car, in the subway, and in the bus every day. I ask you, what exactly has our education system provided for such people? Under the policy of expansion of universities, many technical colleges have been upgraded to comprehensive universities. The number of comprehensive universities rose from 7% to 23.7%. Most of the newly built universities and colleges that offer bachelor's degrees ended up becoming colleges that offer applied liberal arts degrees at a lower cost. As such, it doesn't help at all address the shortage of technical personnel that is desperately needed from both low-end vocational training schools and for high-end manufacturing industries. In 2001, there were only 1.14 million college graduates in China. By 2021, that number has grown eightfold. Chinese parents pay huge sums of money to send their children to college, only to have them fail to find jobs after graduation. And some families even fall into despair because they can't pay off their debts. A Chinese financial website reported on July 13, in a cigarette factory, several college graduates of well-known universities have appeared in the production line. Of the 135 people to be hired, 41 people have a master's degree, accounting for about 30.3%. For graduates in China, there are indeed not many options. So how did the Chinese Communist Party solve the problem of employment for college graduates? The first significant move was the shift from independent universities to vocational technical colleges without warning. 
On June 4, 2021, the Chinese Ministry of Education announced plans to convert 13 independent universities into vocational technical colleges. These universities have unilaterally changed the terms of their academic education and downgraded their general undergraduate education to a vocational undergraduate degree without complying with agreements with the students and without consulting with them. There is a high probability that graduates from these universities will not be eligible for civil service examinations and face discrimination in finding jobs. This is because all industries in China regard graduates from vocational and technical colleges as inferior to graduates from universities. This has led to student protests, rallies and strikes against the restructuring policy to the local government and senior management of independent universities. The student protests spread to multiple provinces in China. In an attempt to stem the growing tide of college graduates, the Chinese government has also recently introduced a new policy to eliminate retakes of the college entrance exam. Since the college entrance exam resumption in 1977, China has implemented it 40 times so far. Students who do not do well on the first try can take it again the following year or later. The abolition of retakes means that such students will not be able to study in public schools and thus lose the opportunity to retake the exam unless they attend private high schools where tuition is very high. Four provinces have already issued explicit rules to eliminate retakers. Chinese people consider the best job being a government official. It means money and privileges followed by a higher paying job. A low-paying job not only makes life difficult, it also means a low social status and the loss of the ability to protect oneself and one's loved ones in a system that lacks fairness and guarantees. As a result, parents are reluctant to send their children to vocational and technical education institutes. Some agencies enroll students in vocational and technical education colleges, teach them introductory courses in the first year, and then send them to factories in the second year, probably as interns, a form of super cheap labor. As student workers, businesses are not required to sign formal labor contracts with students or provide any insurance. According to media reports in China, enterprises are very fond of such arrangements. They will sign a contract with the school and give the students a monthly labor cost of RMB 3000, but in reality they will only give the students RMB 1000, as part of which will be returned to the school. Some of the labor conditions in the factories are very poor, such as no air conditioning in the hot summer months, cramped work areas, poor food and lodging conditions, and even access to the bathroom is strictly controlled. At the end of June 2021, more than 100 underage students from a vocational high school in Hebei province were arranged to work in a factory in Shenzhen under the name of an internship. The students were forced to work more than 10 hours a day, including heavy lifting work. Teachers at the school informed the students that one student had already been disqualified from the internship and expelled from the school due to two absences. They said that they were required to obtain permission to take sick leave or personal leave in the future, otherwise it would be counted as an absence. One of the students, a 17-year-old, jumped to his death because he could not stand the torture of his job.
Chinese Premier Li Keqiang said in March 2021, when answering questions from Chinese and foreign journalists, that there are now more than 200 million people in flexible employment in China. Flexible employment is a new term coined by the Chinese government and is often used as a substitute for unemployment. If these college graduates are included in the flexible employment category by the CCP government, imagine how unflexible their futures will be. Oh, <laughs> 